I want to share today just something that that's just I've been mulling over the last month in my head. My head's been working away. You know, uh, the first week was I was moving with Janine and I and Ethan went uh, gem fossicking in emerald and sapphire and anarchy and all that way. We found some gems. Hopefully it'll pay for my holiday. That'll be great. I don't think so, but we found some. But we had a great time doing that. And while we were doing that, there was a it was just the opportunities, like I said before, you get these opportunities to share with people. And I remember I went into a service station to pick up some nibblies because this, you know how you have cheap meals, you know, when you, you give yourself a cheap meal? Well, I had a whole month of cheap meals. So <laughs> every day we were ice creaming and chocolating and chipping and all that sort of stuff. Hence the, uh, the, the end of the year's resolution for me starts tomorrow. And uh, so today is my pig out day and I'm doing what I want when I want and uh, I'm looking forward to it. But one of the things that happened was I went into the service station to pick up, fill up the car and for the next morning's journey to Toowoomba and, and the lady at the, the counter there I bought some chocolates and the ice cream for us and, and she, she, I said, oh, how's your night going? Well, you know when you meet somebody and they just, she just told me her whole life in 30 seconds, you know, that she was depressed and she had, all, and I thought this must be a God moment. So I took that moment and we were able to just share the light for a brief moment because there was customers in the store. So you, you just do what you do and, and you share the joy of the Lord. And, and it was an amazing opportunity. And, and the thing that I keep coming back to all the time is that I understand right now who believes that we're living in difficult times. Well, not difficult, but complicated a little bit complicated wouldn't you say that what we're doing and where we're going and you know I was watching the election here the state election and in this room I am pretty positive that I can stay state without any study into it at all that there are people sitting in this room that did not vote the way you voted and those people who didn't vote the way you voted are idiots <laughs> right because there's people sitting in here, you would have voted for this party, and in your mind you're going, you are the right person. There's loads of you, I'm following the US election for the first time in history at the moment, and uh, I am just amazed at the stuff that's coming out. And those of you, there's in this room right now, I'll guarantee 120,000% this room could be divided as who should be the president. And the, the problem is right now, is a minute I say, if anybody is voting thinking in their mind, this person should be present. They're idiots. Yeah? It's true, isn't it? Yeah. Anybody who doesn't agree with this in this arena, and how do I know this? Because I watch some of you on Facebook. <laughs> I've seen the way you've talked about these issues. Oh, yeah, I'm a stalker, well and truly. <laughs> I'm a self-confessed Facebook stalker. I'm there in the background, just watching people. I think, wow, that's really what you think. You know, and I thought, that's cool that you think that, you know. And I'm proud of some people because I go, wow, you actually said what you thought. You never do that when I'm in the room. <laughs> you know, and so it's amazing when we watch this stuff. And I'm pretty sure that everybody who doesn't vote the way I voted at the election was stupid and I was the one who was right. My person that I voted for is obviously the man that God wants for the moment. I know that because he got in. But the issue is this, is that we are living in times that are absolutely unprecedented. Absolutely different from what I grew up in as a child. We had the opportunity, I've, for 30 years I wanted to go to the Outback Spectacular at the Gold Coast. For 30 years, I've wanted to go. This year, I went. I saved my money and I said to the family, we are all going to the Outback Spectacular. I went to that place and it was amazing. It was a great night. The food was okay, but it was just a great night. And we had a ball. It was just really, really good. We were, had our cowboy hats on and I wore my jeans and I made my boots and I was like right into it. And at the end of the night, all the horses come running out and they were carrying the Australian flag. All the horses, they ha all had one each. Well, not horses, the people riding them. <laughs> and, and they were riding through and doing these snaky things and doing stunts, and it was amazing. And then they played Hey True Blue. <laughs> Wild horses. 
were doing. And I tell you what, those, the tears were rolling down my face and I was like, this is so awesome. I love my country. This is the country. And then I started to think about the country that I grew up in and now it's not that country. And oh, more tears came. Lissy next to me, she started, what are you crying for, Dad? And I said, it's just so beautiful, darling. On the way home, this is how much I was affected. I downloaded all the old Aussie songs. <laughs> I was listening to Australian Crawl and John Williamson and oh, I was only 19. Red gum, what a great, that is a fantastic song. I cry every, every time I sing, I was only 19, I wasn't even born and it was happening. <laughs> you know, we get so caught up and it was such a beautiful thing and the nation that I grew up in is not that nation anymore and, and, and that's either a sad thing or a whatever but it, it's just one of those things that and some of those things that are really bad, and I'm glad those things are gone, by the way, but some of those things I miss. When I used to go to the beach and sit down as a little kid and, and just sit there. Now, you got to, even if you want to play on the sand, you've got to play between the flags. You know, or they'll send an app. Where's your kid? Find him on the app. You know, I remember wandering through Service Paradise sitting on the beach when I was seven years old. You'd be sitting on the beach and your parents just let you go. Now, you've got a chain, you've got an app, you've got a... <laughs> You've got to watch that tells them where you are. But you see, in God's, I want to take a moment, if I can, to take a step back and let God's word reset our hearts to prepare us to be faithful no matter what the future holds. We're living in dangerous, oh, not dangerous, we're just living in complicated times. And the church, often, I see on Facebook and I see on social media, I see us just saying stuff that, really doesn't resonate with the people that are broken and lost and hurting. And the Bible says this in 1 Peter 5, 6. It says, humble yourselves. Isn't it a great place to start? Recognize that we're not always right. Just recognize it for a moment that you're not right about everything that you talk about. I'm not. I'll be the first to admit. I am not right about everything I do. But it says... Therefore, humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand. I don't know about you, but I'm really thankful for the mighty hand of God on my life. Aren't you? Are you thankful for that? Thankful that his hand rests upon you, that he rules and reigns in my life. He's the supreme God, and I get to humble myself under him, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift me up. The Bible says, in 1 Peter 5, 6 says, that I might be exalted or lifted up in due time i want to focus though on humble yourselves therefore under god just say after me humble sorry under god under god, under god. i'm under god Amen. i'm under god come on i'm under god Amen. humble yourselves therefore under god's mighty hand that he may lift you up so how do we as followers of christ live under God in a culture that's becoming increasingly hostile towards Him. That's true. We're living in a culture that's becoming more and more hostile towards the God that you and I live under and choose to humble ourselves under. So how do we as disciples of Christ faithfully serve Him, faithfully live for Him, and faithfully represent him in a culture that's becoming increasingly hostile towards him. How do we do this? How do we get ourselves into a position of being able to walk humbly under the hand of a God that is not welcome in a society anymore? So let's talk about living under God. But let's first identify your own walk where it's actually at and what are you actually under something i discovered while i was away was some of the influences that i've allowed in my life may not be quite godly i was staying with some people that i would say don't walk with the lord and i was staying with them and i was becoming increasingly aware of the margin between me and them I become increasingly aware of the darkness and the light. And I, it was got to a point where it distressed me so. And Janine kept saying, are you okay? And I said, no, I'm not. I'm just trying to work this out because I love these people. But I can see the margin between us, which is a good thing from my perspective. 
because I would hate to think that I didn't. But I did see it. But today, I want to continue to the, on this journey on a scale of 1 to 10. When you look at your own life, 1 being, no, nah, I'm not under God at all. 10 being, I'm well and true. And nobody in this room is a 10. <laughs> and Jesus is a 10. You might be a 9, but you're not a 10. And I'm not even a 10, so if you're putting me up here and going, well, you must be a 10 because you're the... <laughs> Please ask Janine. She'd probably put me in a 4. So <laughs> when you look at your own life, what is influencing you? Are you under the influence of God? Is he influencing... I want you to open your heart this morning. Go like this. Just open your heart because I'm going to tread on some sacred cows in a minute. My own sacred cows. So don't worry. I've been trampled in the last couple of weeks. So, influence of God. Is he influencing most of your decisions, directing your steps, moving your emotions, and leading you every single day? I'm not talking about what color undies you wear or what shirt you should wear. I'm talking about the important things or where you should park. When we were away, we were in the Brisbane city and my daughter would come with me and I would always get a park out the front of where we needed to go. And they would, Dad, you always do this. I said, because God and I got an agreement. I said, when I drive into somewhere and it's really busy, I tend to get a car park right where I need it. And she goes, oh, but that's just, Dad, that's just, and I said, darling, I understand what you think. I said, but it just happens. I said, I don't even pray about it anymore. I just drive in expecting I'm going to get a park where I need it. And she goes, what? That never works for us. I said, well, try it. I said, I'm not saying I hinge my salvation if I don't get a park out the front. God's left me. I just know I get it. Would you say you are more under the influence of culture, the systems of this world, the thinking of this culture? So what I want to do is try and get you to think and talk about this with others. Don't just sit after today and go, that was a rather challenging message. <laughs> go and talk to somebody and say, I was really challenged about this and I think I'm being influenced in this way. Would you pray with me? We're going to pray with each other after this about this. What is influencing you? So let's look at some different areas. What? Let's look at entertainment. Ready? Netflix, Stan, Prime, Disney Plus. I've got them all. What influences us? My whole family has the whole kit. We put in, we put in $10 a month and we've all got everything we want. We can watch entertainment. You know it now takes me longer to pick a show on all of them than it did to go to the video store and get a DVD. It's ridiculous. Janine hates it when I've got the thing because I just go, <laughs> nothing, <laughs> nothing. Go to the next one, Prime, <laughs> nothing. Go to Netflix, nothing. Stan, nothing. She goes, Dal, there's like 15 million things there and you haven't found one thing. Because why? We get so much stuff. What entertains? I want you to think about whenever you're watching something, enjoying something. Now this is, I want you to get real. Real now. Let's not play church, because we are the church. And if people want to look at the church and be inspired by it, then we've got to walk humbly under God, that he will lift us up in due time. Would you say that you are more under the influence of God? Meaning this, before you watch a show on Netflix or TV or whatever you do, go to the movies, listen to something on the radio, before you listen to music, before you read something, before you open up social media, before you think consciously asking, is this pleasing to God? I say this because while I was away, I was watching something and I had this thought every time I watch it, is this adding to my life? Is this adding something to me or am I just watching it because I think it's good? I feel good when I'm watching it. Is this going to build my faith? Is this, is the answer, if the answer to this is no, you might stay away from it. So if you go no, you might stay away from it. But if the answer is yes, you'll watch it, right? I can ask right now that some of you are watching shows that you just love, but in the back of your mind you're going, I really shouldn't be watching this. That's called God the Holy Spirit, your conscience. It's all of that working away at us. I watch one that I'm not going to name it because you'll all watch it then. Yeah. <laughs> but I love it, but I shouldn't. 
And you know why I love it? Because I watch pastors now and they're talking about it. And I go, oh, it must be right there or watching it. And while I was away, guess what? I get a sermon like this thrown at me or a message in my heart like this and I ah, oh, maybe I shouldn't be watching that because I want to humble myself under God so that in due time, he will lift me up when I needed it, when I need it. So many people are panicking. Oh, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. So if the answer is yes, you might go to it. Would you say that which entertains you is influenced by God? Not everything is bad, so don't sit there and feel bad about watching Peppa Pig or anything like that. <laughs> Not everything is bad. But is what you're watching, is what you're allowing to influence you, is it influenced by God? Does it entertain you? Or would you say you're more under culture? In other words, this is what you need to ask yourself. Does it matter if it's God-honoring? Does it matter if what you're watching or being entertained by honours God or not? Maybe your answer is no. Does it matter if it's filthy? Some of you are. But you might be reading Mills and Boone. Oh, no, no. You see, we've got to stop this. This, no, I would never do that. But there's other things we do. We'll get to that. If it's funny, that's good enough for me. That's good enough for me. If I can find a funny show, there is a hilarious show on TV, but it's crude. They even throw in a few things about Jesus every now and then, but it's funny. Guess what? I've had to flick it. Only in the last fortnight because I've been convicted. I've allowed, because I want to humble myself. I'm under, where am I? Where are we? We're under God. Does it matter what's in the music then that you listen to? Does it matter what you read about? Does it matter? Don't nod and shake and do, just think about this. I don't care what you think about this. You have to answer this question because you have to walk humbly under God. Not me. I've got to do my bit. So put a stick around your head and keep it still for a second. Because I don't want people to know what you think about this. You discuss it with each other. Get with your friends and talk. Would you say, when you look at which that which entertains you, you're more under culture or under God? Ask yourself that question. Is what entertains me under God? And just ask him to help you deal with it. I'm going to give you a few points today, but don't... Don't stress, okay? Stop stressing right now. Stop stressing and stop saying, looking at me like he's going to step on everything. I'm not going to be able to have any fun. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm just talking about let's be humble under God. Another category. This is a cracker. Let's talk about money. Come on, okay. See, you're so excited about that. <laughs> I don't know how often you get paid, weekly, fortnightly, three weeks, monthly, whatever it is, but when you receive your money... What influences what you do with it? What's your influence? Would you say that you're really, 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 really under God in your money? Like you recognize this comes from God. When I get my pay, I recognize God's supply in my life and I do the very first thing is I give him what is due him. Now there's people that argue with the tithe is Old Testament and all that. You know, I couldn't give a rat's if it's Old Testament, New Testament, Middle Testament, Middle Earth, High Earth, whatever. I am going to give to God. I am going to give my tithe and I am going to give because I've made a decision. But what do you do? I want to give him the tithe because I know it comes from him. I know my job that I have right now, God has put me there for a reason. So every inch of money that comes, I try to honor him with. I try to do the right thing. I really want to honor God with what I have. It should be a question or a statement that we have. I want to be a good steward. I'm going to enjoy some of it, like we just had a holiday. We went fossicking for emeralds. We went to Russell Island. We went to Mount Tambourine. We ate out at restaurants. We went to cafes. We did all this. But I saved my little hiney off for 12 months knowing that this was coming. 
And so when I went away, I wanted Janine to walk into a shop and go, I really like that and love that. Honey, if you want that, you have it. She couldn't believe it. She's gone, so how much money have we got? I said, I'm not telling you how much money I've saved. I've saved so that we can have a holiday. We'd go to a cafe. She'd go, oh, I'd love that and that and that. Let's have it. Now I came back. Did I have any money when I came back? No. <laughs> Did you know that every cent that I saved lasted me till yesterday? Every cent. Even on the last day... My car, I don't know if you know, I drive a Mitsubishi Outlander and it's a pretty roomy little car for three people over six foot. But Janine made sure there was not one nook or cranny available for anyone to move in that car except sit. Because she, we went to antique shops, we went, we went to an antique shop, we just happened to go out for breakfast with my daughter. There was an antique shop there. We went into the antique shop, she's this lamp, she wants this lamp, this is, it's a lamp. It's a jolly lamp for crying out loud. And she's been looking at these lamps. I know she has. She didn't want the old, it's a kerosene one, but they convert it to a light. So they're like three or $400 each. So we went into this swanky antique shop thinking, she's just looking around. And here at the front counter, there is a lamp like that. All the others around it was $600. This one was $89 because it had a brass tarnish on the side. Now, if you know Janine, she'll fix that. She'll, oh, we'll work that out somehow. And then when I took it to the counter, it was $62 because 30% off. Because. I said, God, you're not on my side here. I'm trying not to fill the car. We found an urn, a concrete urn. She wanted in the thing. They're like hundreds of dollars. She walks in into this antique store and there's the very one she's looking for on sale for 69 bucks. <laughs> Darling, can I buy it? <laughs> I knew I had the money. I wanted to say we're broke, but... <laughs> but when it comes to our money, do we really... And she blows me away. The, the, the bargains that she gets are just... But when it comes to money, are you really under the influence? Or would you say you're probably under the influence of culture? In other words, you don't even think about God first. And if you're going to give to God, it's not the first thing you do. It's probably the last thing. You make sure you pay all your bills. Make sure everything that's left over, he can have. Do you honour him? Because culture drives and consumes our spending. There, doesn't it? Does. Culture does that. You've got to have this. You've got to have that. When I was away, I went to Costco. Anybody been to Costco? <laughs> Shoppers delight. And if, it's, they had, if it doesn't come in packs of 20, it's too small. <laughs> I, it just blows your mind. It's, it's incredible to think what you can purchase in bulk. We bought a bag of Twisties for our trip to Russell Island. Two kilo bag of Twisties. <laughs> have you seen a two kilo bag of Twisties before? I've never seen that before. I just bought it because I've never seen it. <laughs> sort of walking out with a bag of twisties. Like, it's amazing. It's, a, it's a just amazing. But culture breeds us to go and spend, 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 spend. We, we spent, we, my friend took us because you can't just go to Costco, you've got to be a member. So my friend who's a member took us and between the two of us we spent way too much money. They had tomahawk steaks. Mark, Tom, Graham, Tomahawk Steaks. Like, remember the old, old Fred Flintstone when they used to bring the brontosaurus they put on the side of the car? That's what it was like, Costco. It's amazing. No, it's not quite that big, but... But see, we think we'll be happy if we have all this stuff and we're chasing something out there that consumers, that wants us to be consumers. And we bring that to God and we bring that to church, that if it doesn't satisfy me, then I'm out. If it doesn't meet my needs... And when it comes to our money, would you say that you're under the influence of God or would you be under influence of culture? What about the words we speak? Think about the words that you spoke to somebody last week, just in the last week. What are the words like that you've been speaking to people? Are your words giving life 
Do they bring honour to God? Are your words encouraging and pointing people towards eternity and the things that last and the things that matter? Or would you say you're under world culture? Meaning you kind of go along with the flow and everybody else is whinging, so I may as well whinge too. See, as a believer, as a follower of Christ under God, we don't whinge. We really shouldn't. We should be bringing life to things. And you're tearing people down with your words are angry and sometimes, you man, you just got to read Facebook, honestly. Honestly, you just got to read the feeds that people put up and it's just really sad to watch. And most of the people that I know, because a lot of my friends on Facebook are believers, and you watch what they say and you just go, my goodness, we need to stop. You found yourself gossiping a little bit, talking bad about those people who voted for that party, stupid idiots. People who voted for this party, it's their fault we've got this. None of you are right. Because we, we've got to begin to see that we are under God. So are you influenced by God or are you influenced by culture? What influences your life? One more, your self-worth. Let's look at this one. This is a cracker. So we've gone through money, we've gone through words, we've gone through all the other ones, but... How about your self-worth? How do you feel about yourself? What would you say, would you say that you're under God's influence in this? Does it really matter what people say about you or think about you? Or are you secure knowing who you are in Christ? Are you secure in that? Meaning if you don't have the right label on your hair, like I definitely don't, although the lady the other day that cut my hair said, she said, Bald men with beards, go for it, guys. You don't look like bowling balls. I thought, is that a compliment or not? <laughs> but the whole issue was this, is that, that we are always pin, pinning ourselves. You know, when I was on Facebook a lot, I'm not, I haven't been on it now since about June, I think I stopped going on I, I look and w- look at things, but I don't interact anymore. And uh, I, I remember looking on things. I'll go online for the church thing. I'll look at that and I'll go, oh, we only had that many watched today. And then I'll go to a friend's church and they've had double what we had. And then I get really like, <laughs> God doesn't love us and all this sort of thing. Or, and so I started to get depressed about it because you see, I put more emphasis on what people thought about what we do or what I am and who I am than I did what God is saying and leading us and calling us to do. And here's what really sad. Many of us don't even have any idea what actually influences and what influence we're under. That's the really sad part about all of this. I don't know if you've ever been around a drunk person. Anybody been around a drunk person or been a drunk? Don't have to tell me. (laughs) But when you're a drunk or you drink a lot, after four drinks, everybody in the room looks amazing. After six, even you look great. You know, you've seen those guys. I had a mate, I went away when I was a chef, I went away on a, a, teach, a training weekend with him and two girls from college. They put the girls in one room and us in another room. And I remember him and the girls went out, because I don't drink, so I just went and had my sarsaparilla and I was really cool and all that sort of thing. And I was 19 at the time. But this guy, he came up and he goes, he's had a few, and he goes, I love you, man. He let's see, they, you see two guys, they love each other. I love you. No, I love you. So alcohol influences us, doesn't it? And we don't even know that it influences us. We don't know that that's the th- everybody in the room starts looking beautiful, even you. You know, you walk into the room at the first, and there's no way you would go out with a guy that looks like that, but at the end of the night, you find yourself waking up with him because that's what alcohol does. How many movies have we seen like that? Oh my goodness! But the issue is this, is that we're under an influence that changes us. We're under the influence of something that we're not even sure. It influences who we think is attractive. Alcohol does, I'm talking about, but I'm not dealing with alcohol. I'm just using it as an example that we are under the influence of something that we don't even know that we've been influenced by. So, humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may lift you up in due time. 
So on a scale of 1 to 10, where would you put yourself as being under the influence of God? How do we live under God in this culture? There's a story of Daniel, and I'm closing with this, Daniel in the lion's den, uh, Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. And they were captured by the king. If you know this, most of you know the story. They were captured by the king, Nebuchadnezzar, who was a, the Babylonians. They were an evil race at the time. They were doing everything against God. They burnt the temple. They destroyed the Jerusalem. They did everything. And what they did was they captured the best young men of the time to influence them. What they did was that for three years, they would bring them into a place and they would train them the language. They would train them in uh, the culture of the, of the land and all that sort of thing for three years. And at three time, years' time, they were going to be the new leaders of Babylon. Now, Daniel didn't mind his name being changed because in, back in Jerusalem, they had Hebrew names, which were honoring to God. When he went there, he deso- the, um, the, the king changed their names to Babylonian names. And th- in that place, they didn't fight against that. They weren't worried about that. But what the time came was when they had to eat the delicacies that were given to the pagan God. Well, if you know the story... Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said this, we don't want to eat this, we want to eat these delicacies. We want to eat the, just the vegetables and the fruit. And the, the, the eunuch of the time, he said, you can't do that, the king will kill me because you will look scrawny and you're supposed to look good, strong and healthy. And they said this, they said, let us do this for 10 days and you'll see that we are stronger than all of the others. And so that's, I'm just paraphrasing that for the story's sake. And in 10 days' time, they come back. One of the other things I want to point out in this story, though, is this. They didn't yell and rant and rave and put a big thing on Facebook saying, this is an evil country or anything like that. They went and sought the head person and said, look, we don't agree with doing this, but we want to do this and show you that God will do this greater in our lives. All our ranting and raving, if we're not under the influence of God, see, because they were under the influence. The king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, wanted to have them under the influence of Babylon so that in three years' time, they would lead that country with greatness. He picked men without, young men without blemish, without any issue that were intelligent, that were high-ranking in their field and all that sort of thing. He picked them because they were going to make Babylon even greater. The rest of the story goes on and Babylon actually falls and all that sort of thing. But in this plan, all the way through, Daniel and the boys stand up and say, just give us the vegetables and the fruit and watch what happens. They led the way. They stayed under the influence of God. They prayed and they got to make a difference in a great nation. In these days, I find that The enemy is lying to us every day. You may kind of believe in God. Some people sitting in church kind of believe in God. Kind of believe that he'll get you through. Kind of believe it. And so we choose whether we go to church regularly or not, whether we fellowship with the church. Some people come monthly. Some people come every week. Some people come once every six weeks or whatever it is. And then when something goes wrong in their life, they start to go, God, where are you? Because see, fellowshipping and being under the influence of God, being under God, I am under God. I make a decision. See, for me, years ago, I made a decision, a decision about tithing. When I was a kid, I, my mum and dad, I, w- I had a job. I was earning $4 a, a day. I was Saturday, I, would work, I was earning a dollar an hour. I'd work from 8 till 12 and I earned a dollar. I get home with my two two dollar notes. Remember them? Not coins, notes. I get home with them, and my mum would take one and split it up and give me a dollar and five 20 cent pieces. And she'd say, You need to give 40 cents to God. Now, sitting here today, 40 cents, that's nothing. When you got four bucks and you're 10 years old, 40 cents, you know how many lollies you would get for 40 cents? Remember when lollies were like 
half a cent. You get two for one cent. I remember from that day, as I got older and got jobs, I just tithed. I just gave. I just did. I'm, only t- I'm not telling you this. You've got to make your own decision about giving to God and giving into the house and all that sort of stuff. Because if, quite frankly, my last holiday was just an absolute, absolute sealer of the deal again for me, that I'm doing the right thing by giving the way I give. You know, to pull up in my driveway last night and go, honey, I don't feel like cooking. Let's have fish and chips. No worries. Look at my bank account and go, that's it. (laughs) From my holiday stash. I just looked to the heavens and said, God, I, I, I am amazed at how you do this. And I looked at the back of my car and the load of stuff I had to get out. But it was God's blessing. Not one thing in that car was full price. And Because I, I, I know I made a decision. On holidays, my pay would come in, first thing to go out. Open it up, check my pay, tied straight away. Didn't care about my bills. That God looked after that. Guess what? All my bills are paid. I come back to... No bills because I had money to pay. Why? Because I believe in the thing that I made. I predetermined. Another thing is church. I predetermined that I go to church. From a young man, I just predetermined it. I will go to a service. I don't care whether it's a great church or a a huge church or a little church. I will go to church. Why? Because it's the church we fellowship with. We, we do this thing. We, we, people have this black door for anything. It might be for you. It might be alcohol. It might be sex. It might be porn. It might be, but you've got a back door. And today I want to ask you this question is, what is the one thing that you will say, God, I will humble myself under you today. I will humble under you. I am humble to you. As I said, my giving. I just have made a decision. I have made a decision that I will give. Church, I have made a decision that I will go. Drinking, I made a decision. I was a chef. I was around alcohol all the time. I was serving it. I was learning how to make the right drinks and all the stuff, Galliano and all that sort of thing. And to do that, you're supposed to taste it. When you're learning, they say, here, taste it, see what it's like. This is what it should taste like. I never did. Every time it came my way, I was going, I'll have to say, I'll have to say. And then somebody would go, give me that and drink the lot. Every time. They knew I didn't drink. And I wasn't there to learn how to serve, but I was there to serve alcohol. I was there to learn to cook. And so I just, in my head, have gone, I'm never going to drink. To this day, I haven't. Lemon, lime and bitters, apparently, that's the one. I remember I asked a policeman once, I had two lemon lime and bitters at a wedding, and I, he said, have you been drinking? I said, I had two lemon lime bitters, he laughed his head off. I gathered there was nothing there, as I blew in the bag. I was serious, I thought, well, I two, I usually only have one. People tell me. But I made a decision, I just decided, I, I predestined, I predetermined myself, that God, that's something I'm not going to give in. But over the holidays, God challenged me about, am I humbling myself under him? I watch a lot of stuff on social media, and I I watch Christians say things that, when if I was, I put myself in a person who doesn't know God's shoes, and reading that post, and I go, no wonder these people are like they are. Some of the stuff I've read about from the church about the, the U.S. politics, the U.S. election is just scary. I saw one the other day that, day that anybody that voted for this person, so in, a, in the U.S. right now, there's 76 million people filled with demons. That was the word because they voted for this person. Put yourself in an unsaved person's shoe as you read that new. They went to the newspaper. Put yourself there and go, 
what, what do you think? I humble myself under God. What's the one thing right now? I know God's talking to you because I can feel Him. I feel Him. I sense Him. Yeah. I know He's wanting to talk. Maybe it's one of the five things I listed. Maybe it's something else. Maybe you struggle in a certain area of your life that you've tried to get. So make a decision today. I'm not saying that there are things that, you know, there are stuff, there's stuff that goes on in people's life, addictions and things like that, that you just need to keep crying out to God. Say, God, I am delivered of this and I walk free of it today. But keep coming back. And when you fall next, you say, I am under God. God, I am under you. And I'll guarantee if you do this, one of the things I do know is this, that one day those things will be fallen away. But what happens is the enemy tricks us and we're coming into culture because culture always tells us, this culture tells us, if you're like that now, you'll be like that later on. God says, you might have been like that, but I made you like this. Behold, I have made you a new creation. Old things have passed away. Yay, all things are new. But what's the one thing in your life today? What's the one area in your life that you're saying, God, take it. Move in me. Release me. Help me. See it. I humble myself under you. In 1 Peter 5, 6. There's other passages that say, you be a, you're transformed by the renewing of your mind. By the Word of God will renew you. Most of us don't even read. There's another predetermination I made. I used to wake up in the morning and my phone would click off and Facebook would come up. I switched all those things off earlier this year, back before COVID. I switched it all off and I determined that the first thing I do is read the Bible. I just determined it. And then I pray and say, Holy Spirit, ask me, help me, sorry, to, to, to do this. And when I fail, help me to come back, not just to stop and go, oh, I failed and don't do it again. Come back and say, Holy Spirit, thank you today. I'm under God. I have predetermined. I predetermined to come. Did I feel like being coming back from my holiday? No. But I predetermined I've got to start work tomorrow. If I don't show up, I may not be able to go on another holiday. I predetermined I need to be here today. We said that we said it when before we went on holidays. I could either stay away for five Sundays or four Sundays. Four was plenty. Besides, I didn't want Mark and Kylie, who did an absolutely phenomenal job while we were away with the team. To stress them all, to have any more stress <laughs> with moving and all that sort of stuff. But I want you right now just to take a moment. We're going to break up into our little prayer times. If you've got somebody you want to pray with, I want you to go and just take a moment just to talk and say, you don't even have to tell them if you don't want to, but you say, God is talking to me about an area and I'd love you to stand with me. That's all you've got to do. If you want to tell them, tell them. There's no secrets, okay? Jesus wants us to be open and, and bear before him. What is it that you are saying, God, today? And I'll, I'll tell you this, this is how you'll know. There's something that you've been into or something that you have been enjoying and you've got it in the back of your head going, you know what, I really need to stop this. You can wrestle with it all you want. It's gonna, you're going to be the one that comes off worse in the end. Trust me, I've tried it. It just doesn't work that way. But if you allow the Spirit of God to flow and say, God, have mercy, help me. And some of you here sitting, well, I've done this heaps of times. No, no, stop. Stop. Do it again. I'm not here to, to judge you. I'm not here to say whether or not you've done it too many times. What's too many times? But I'm here to say today, what is that one thing? Just one. I've got a list because I realize there's a lot of things I need to do if I want to walk in the ways of God. And you'll all have it. 
But some of you will be sitting here now going, I've got so many, where do I start? Pick one. Holy Spirit, what's one? It could be speaking. Getting in your car and being in a rush all the time because you're late. You sleep in, you touch the snooze too many times. It could be what you read. It could be a deeper issue. It could be something much worse than that. But ask God, and I use the wrong term there, not even worse, just it could be something that holds you back. Come on, folks, we need to stop pointing our finger at the world. It's easy to point righteousness at the world and not allow it to affect us. That's what I'm talking about today. Speak to your wife, your husband. The words you use, do you tear them down all the time? Hey, you speak to your children. That's one of mine. What I think about when they're, they're walking the way they choose to walk and when they come into me, into my place, the wrestles and the struggles and the way I speak sometimes. The kids often say to mum, they say, Dad, why is dad so angry today? See, I can't do that. I need to be able to show it in a way that they know they're still accepted and valued and loved. Just like God did for me. Still accepts me when I'm stinky. Still values me. And still loves me no matter what. So you've got your area. I'm pretty sure you don't have to dig very deep to look for one, unless you're an N. Halos to shine and all that sort of thing. But this morning, let's just break up into our little groups and pray for each other over this. Just specifically these things. Don't, doesn't have to be, again, don't dig for it if you're the person praying. Just lay, don't lay hands on them. I was just about to say lay hands. We're not allowed to do that yet. It's coming though. I'm really pretty sure it's coming. And um, But let God just be at work with you and that person. If you're a visitor here, that one of our leaders will come and say hey and all that sort of thing and make sure you're feeling welcome and don't make this thing scary. Just be normal. Be normal. I love this church because you're pretty normal. You're all pretty normal. Do you like my new outfit? My daughter, thank you. My daughter picked it. The lady said, what's it for? I said, I have no idea. My daughter told me I must buy it. So here I am. Look, like a leprechaun. But God is here today. God is with you. God will never leave you nor forsake you. And he asks you right now just to Walk humbly before him. That he will lift you up in due season.